guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be doing a video that I have not seen on the internet yet. I obviously didn't do a crazy ton of research, but I was sitting down one day and I have a list of videos that um, I want to film on my phone and this randomly popped into my head and I thought, you know what? This would be really good for me, um, not even for like anybody else, but just for me to look back on in a year from now and be like, you know what? Like, this is what my mental headspace was for the year of 2017. These were my goals for 2018. And then like I can see what I accomplished, what I didn't, how much the year has changed me and all of that. So I have a list on my phone um, of things that I want to talk about in this video of things that have that I've dealt with in 2017 and things that are like my goals for 2018. Um, so I'm just titling this a year in review. Let me know if this is a video you guys want to see. Maybe like every year I can do a year in review and let you guys know like things that have happened in my life, um, things that I've accomplished, things that have changed me and stuff like that. I think that that'd be a really good idea. Um, before I get into the video, just letting you guys know to subscribe in case you guys have not already. And don't forget to give the video a big thumbs up. I appreciate those all the time. And um, let's jump right into this video because it's going to be long. I have, like I said, if you guys see me like looking down, it's because I'm looking at the list on my phone because I don't want to forget anything that I said that I wanted to talk about um, because they were really like important like in my head and I can't like, sometimes when I'm sitting down filming a video, like it just kind of leaves my head sometimes and I like forget what I'm going to say or I forget what I'm going to talk about and then later on I'll be editing and be like, oh my god, I wish I said that or um, whatever. So I am sick right now. I know you guys can probably hear it in my voice, but I am slowly getting over it. So if I have like a coughing attack, just like bear with me. So let's just jump right into this video. I broke it down into three sections, career, personal, and love life. Let's start with the career. So in the beginning of this year, as you guys know, I was working a retail job. I was a manager at a retail store and honestly, like I just wasn't happy in retail. I had been telling myself for a while that I wanted to get out. It wasn't for me. I was just really over the whole like customer service and I was just wor over working like all different hours all the time, you know, sometimes working till like midnight or like one in the morning on like a Sunday and then having to come in on a Monday like it was just intense and I just didn't want that anymore I really wanted more of a structured work schedule so then I could film a lot more YouTube videos and I would just have more of a structured life I felt like the one thing that would really help me and I would be less stressed about is if my work was just consistent and I could just plan things around that because I felt like my schedule was changing every week and it was just really hard to plan my life. So I ended up leaving my retail job in June, end of May, beginning of June, and I have started a 9, 9.30 to 5.30 Monday through Thursday job. So I have Fridays and the weekends off. So. I have a lot more time to dedicate to you guys and dedicate to myself. I think that's one thing that I promised myself this year is that I was going to dedicate more time to myself and that's exactly what I've been trying to do. So yeah, so I just really wanted to dedicate more time to myself and it was just a stressful work environment. So I have since left that job and I'm very happy with the job I have now. Um, like I said, I have Fridays and the weekends off so it's like I really can't complain. I have a three-day weekend every week and I can do things on the weekend and I don't have to worry about like requesting time off on the weekends and stuff like that. So I'm really happy with the job that I have right now. Um, also, I really wanted it to give me time for you guys on YouTube, like I said. Um, now, like, I have worked all day and now I'm home and I'm filming a video for you guys. And then I will edit it and, like, it makes it easier, I guess, because some days when I was not working my retail job, like, let's say I had a Tuesday off, I had so many other things that I needed to do because I only had two days off a week and they were kind of all over the place. So it's like all the things that I needed to do needed to be jam packed into those days. And sometimes filming just kind of just caught the back burner a little bit and um, that was like the last priority but now I know that I'm out at work at 5 30 every day and I can come home and I can film videos for you guys so that is a really good thing about this job so 2018 um, I want to keep the goal the pretty much the same I really do want to focus a lot of my time and my energy on YouTube um, I feel like I want to come back stronger than ever and I want to do a lot of different content I think I for a second was doing just a lot of makeup tutorials. It was just makeup tutorial, makeup tutorial, makeup tutorial, makeup tutorial. And I felt like there was just so much more to me than just makeup. And then I came back and I started doing a lot of transgender videos and like that's like kind of all I was posting. And then I like lacked the makeup tutorials and then I felt like I wasn't like being creative with my makeup anymore and I kind of lost my spark for that. So I think I need a healthy balance here of transition videos and um, makeup videos because makeup is my passion and being transgendered is part of who I am so I think that combining them both could lead to like a really 
good channel and some good videos all the time. Everyone who has subscribed for makeup videos, I will be doing a lot more tutorials. And everyone who has subscribed, subscribed for like transgendered videos, I will be doing a ton of those also. I just think I need a little bit more of a healthy mix of them instead of doing like all one or the other. Okay guys, career section wasn't too huge. The next section is the personal section. So this is kind of a, um, I don't know, this is just like a little bit of general, like personal stuff. So this year I did change my name and my gender marker, which was so exciting. I said on my 23rd birthday last year, last November, I said that by the time I turned 24, my name and my gender marker needed to be changed. And I did that this year. It took a while. It took a lot longer than I had expected. If you guys want me to do, um, how I like how to change your name like a like kind of like a how-to or like a tip or something video Let me know in the comments down below if you guys are curious transgendered or maybe you just want to change your last name middle name Whatever you guys want to do let me know because mine was like a little bit of a hefty process and it was lengthy It took a lot of time to do and um, it was like three months worth like I Started at the beginning of the summer and it was August by the time our August or September by the time I had legally gotten my name changed. I think it was September. It's a lengthy process that I had never dealt with before and I kind of just figured it out as I went along. So if it's something you guys want like a little bit of like tips on, I am in New York so I only really know how to do it in New York. Um, but other than that, if that's something you guys want to see, let me know in the comments down below and I will do a separate video for you guys on that. But I did do that this year which I was really excited about. The next thing that I did this year, which was right at the beginning of the year, is I started laser hair removal. I told you guys this in my last video, which was all about laser hair removal. I started in January. I think it was like January 12th or January 15th or like some one of those days. I started laser hair removal. It was my first session. And now we are almost a year later. And I pretty much have no facial hair growth at all. And I'm really happy with that. So... I was really excited. Like, this year was, like, a becoming me year. Like, I still have a lot more to go, but I think this year I really had came... I really have started to mold into who I am, like, physically and, like, mentally and emotionally, which this year I had learned a lot about myself and about, like, friends and about, like, family members and stuff like that. This June I told my grandparents I was transgendered, and I thought that that was going to go a little bit bad because they are older and they are from a different generation, but honestly, it has been nothing but love and support from my family, my whole entire family, so it's great in that aspect, and um, yeah, so I feel like I can finally openly, freely be who I am, because I was transitioning for about a year before I had told my grandma, my grandmother, and I mean, a year of your transition is, like, the first year of your transition is kind of crazy, and there's a lot of things that are happening, and I just, I had that in the back of my head, like, the whole year that I was transitioning, I was like, oh my god, you know what, like, I have to tell her, I was like, I can't really officially start living my life, um, when she is continuing to call me, like, he pronouns, and, um, like, my old name, and stuff like that, like, I just felt like my transition was, like, not being fulfilled, because I was still being reminded of, like, my old self, so I needed to kind of just cut the ties, and, like, let everybody in my family know what was going on and it's been nothing but love and support so I'm really excited about that. Another thing that I have learned this year is how to love myself. I feel like over the past couple years I've just been beating myself up about everything, about the way that I look, like my beard wasn't good, I just felt like my body wasn't how I wanted it to be, but I think this year has really shown me, um, obviously like you need to love yourself for who you are, but like when you're in a situation like I am, being transgendered, it's a little bit harder because you're looking in the mirror and not seeing the body that needs to be there. Like, it's not matching what is inside your head. So, I think this year I had started to, like, I, like I said before, I had a lot of breast development. Uh, my hips have widened a lot and, um, like, my body fat has distributed nicely and my body is just overall where I want it. Um, obviously, like, there's work that I want to do. Like, I want, like, a smaller waist, this, whatever. That's just, those are just all random things. But right now, like, when I look at my body, when other people look at my body, it is feminine. Like, it's a, fe a hu very feminine physique. It's just very feminine, and I can thank hormones for that. But it's also caused me to love myself a lot more because I'm starting to see myself the way that I see myself in my head. And it's honestly so nice. Obviously, it's not all about what your body looks like and all that, but in a way, in a situation like this, it's not like, oh, like, I'm too fat or I'm too skinny or I'm too this or I'm too that. Your body looking a different gender than what you feel. So this year, I have developed a love for myself. 
um, that I have never had before. Okay, so for um, 2018, um, for my personal life, I have surgery on the list. Um, I am scheduling some consultations for a couple different things. So just going to leave it at that. I'm not going to jinx myself. I'm not going to get too much into it when things are a little bit more official. I will, um, I will divulge into that a little bit more, but just to let you know, surgery is on the horizon and I'm very excited about that. Um, I definitely want to have a breast augmentation this year and I, my one goal is to have SRS either scheduled or done. So we will see what happens, but I think that those are some completely realistic goals, but like I said, I'm just going to leave it at that and we will get more into that in another video when things are a little bit more official. Also, I want to continue to grow as a person and accept myself for who I am. Um, and that means without makeup, without like all the glam, without all the lashes and the lips and the highlight and all that, like learning to just look in the mirror and accept myself for who I am as a person, not just what I look like, but also like how I am as a person. Am I a good person? Could I be a better person? Could I be kinder? Could I be nicer? Could I be more genuine? Could I give more? You know what I mean? It's just, I want to be an all over good person and I want to just admit positivity into the world and I just want to ignore the negativity and I know that negativity is there and it will always be there but I want to be able to see the positive in everything and I am a very positive person um, I don't like to be negative I don't like to dwell on the negativity I feel like it doesn't really get me anywhere it gets nobody anywhere but I think we can all improve a little bit so I want to be a little bit more of a positive light for me and myself so there is that. All right, and the next section is the love life section. Um, this is probably the joke of the year, honestly. I feel like my love life this year has been an absolute joke, tragedy, whatever you guys want to call it. It has literally been a joke. Um, so I have, like, in my notes, a lot of hiccups. There's been a lot of hiccups this year, honestly, in, like, the love life category. Um, I can't say that I'm the only one to blame. Um, there is, obviously, like, I played my role in every relationship um, and, like, almost relationship that I've had this year, um, definitely, but I will definitely not be the only one to take fault at that because it takes two to tango. So I did have my first, like, serious relationship this year, you guys know. He came on YouTube for a hot minute. That had taught me a lot about relationships, honestly, about what I did want, what I didn't want, how I needed to be in a relationship, red flags and signs that I need to see in someone else that, you know, maybe this person isn't right for me and that I need to let it go. So this year in that relationship and a couple other relationships have taught me a lot about, um, what I want and what I don't want and how I will be treated and how I won't be treated. And that is something I have really learned this year. Um, I used to let guys talk to me however they wanted, walk all over me, um, treat me like an object or treat me in such a way. But I just, I don't do that anymore and I don't put up with any bullshit. Sorry for like being so foul, but honestly, like I just don't and I won't put up with bullshit anymore. Um, as soon as I like am, am sensing a little bit of like, you know, like something is a little off here, or you know what, like he's not into it as much as I am, or I'm putting all the effort in and I'm getting nothing in return, I'm out. I'm like not staying in it and I'm not going to even waste my time thinking about it afterwards. I'm just moving on to bigger and better things. I'm not putting my life on hold to worry about somebody else. Like obviously I put all my all into a relationship of any kind, friendship or relationship. I just do. That's just how I am. I put everything into it. But I'm not going to put everything into it if someone is putting half into it. And there's a lot of people out there, even some of the people I've dated and talked to, that put half-ass effort in and try to play it off like it's their best. And it just doesn't cut it anymore. And I won't, like, I just won't put up with it. Like, I just, I have no time for it. You know, like, this year, like I said, um, I don't know if I've said it here, but I've said it to all my friends. 2018, I'm going to focus on me. I think I have a lot of things that I want to get done. Um, mentally, physically, career-wise, and personally, there's a lot of stuff that I want to get done. And I can't be putting energy into something that someone else isn't putting equal amount of energy into. It's just simple as that. Like, you can't waste your time or your energy on things that are just going to take it from you. So that is my little life lesson that I learned this year. In 2018, I have down that I am not looking for love. Like, I 
I feel like in the past, like, I've kind of just, that's been on my forefront. Like, I'm a hopeless romantic, and I think I'm always just looking for, like, the one. Every person I talk and I date and stuff like that, I kind of try to see if I can see if they're the one, and I know that that may not be the best thing, but if I can't see myself marrying someone, or if I can't see myself having kids with someone or any of that, like, I'm not going to waste my time dating them for six months to what, break up? Like, what's the point? Like, it's six months of wasted time, you know? Like, I look for, like, a husband in everybody that I talk to. And that may sound like, oh my goodness, that's, like, scary. Like, why are you doing that? But you have to think about it. Like, there's two things that are going to happen when you date someone. Either you're going to date them and you're going to marry them, or you're going to date them and you're going to break up with them. It's kind of just like if you both want different things in life. Like, let's say I want two kids and someone else wants zero kids. Like, it's never going to work, like, in the long run because they don't want kids and you want two kids, you know? It'll be something that you guys always fight over. Like, you have to find someone with common ground and who is equal in what they want in life. I just feel like a lot of people will settle for... Oh, you know, he doesn't want one kid, or maybe he'll want one kid later on, and then, you know what I mean, they have one kid instead of having, like, the two that they wanted, or whatever the case may be. Just look for people who have common ground with you, and if they don't, and you're just feeling like the relationship isn't really going to go anywhere, then it's probably best to cut it off because you're probably just going to waste time and regret it in the long run. But I don't regret anything. I feel like I learn a lot from every relationship I've ever been in. Um, friendship or relationship. I just have learned about people. And I've learned what I like and what I don't like in friends. I've learned what I like and what I don't like in a potential like lover and stuff like that. So that is what I'm not doing this year. Looking for love. The second thing that I wrote in there is um, don't accept people's half-ass trying as their indication of caring for you. Because... That is not true at all. I've dealt with this a lot with friends, and I've dealt with this a lot with, um, pretend, like, with, like, people in relationships. Like, they don't try their best, but they make it seem like they're, they're doing everything that they can. And you can tell when someone, it's actions speak louder than words. Simple as that. If somebody wants to hang out with you, but constantly always has an excuse, or they're always busy, and they can never make time for you, chances are they really don't want to see you, or they, you're on their priority list, you're pretty low. Like, they have other things they want to do. Like, they'd rather go to the movies with their friends, and they'd rather go hunting, or they'd rather do this or that than hang out with you. That just shows where you are on their priority list, and you just kind of have to take it for what it is. Like, don't try to read into it. Just honestly, if someone says something and does something completely different, their actions are going to speak way louder and just take their actions into consideration because they are showing you exactly how they feel about you. I just feel like I'm like the love life guru this year because I've learned literally so much. I'm not kidding. I dated a lot this year. Like I dated a lot. Like I, and that doesn't mean that I had like relationships. I just went on a lot of dates. Um, this was like a single summer year. I went on like a lot of dates, like a lot. There was like one week. I went on four in one week just because my one friend was like, her like life motto was like single summer a long time ago. And she was just like, someone asked you out to dinner, just go. Like, what is the worst that's going to happen? And I was like, this is true. This is true. So I did date a lot this summer and I did learn a lot about myself. And I learned a lot about, like I said, what I want in somebody else. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and let me know what some of your New Year's resolutions are down below. What are some things that you guys learned this year that maybe you guys can tell me that maybe I've never been through or maybe something you just want to get off your chest. I'm always there to listen. So leave your comments down below of things that you guys have learned this year. I'm curious to know and are you guys excited for 2018 as I am because 2017 was a whirlwind. I'm ready for it to be over. I love you guys so much. Have a great Christmas. I'm not going to have a video up for Sunday. It is going to be Christmas Eve. So enjoy the time with your family and your friends. And I will see you guys next Thursday. Have a good holiday. And I love you guys so much. And Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Whatever you guys celebrate. I love you guys so much. See you in my next video.